and welcome to the Financial Wake Up Show. Each week, we explore and take a deep dive into awakening the financial abundance we all have inside of us. We educate and create awareness by focusing on fundamental principles of money, talking to business and community leaders about successful habits, while learning from each other how to build, protect, and create legacies. And now, here's your host, Daniel Choi. All right. Good morning. And uh, it's a new day. And with each day comes a new beginning and a new chance to do something great, learn something new, and enjoy everything this great life has to offer us. And through technology today, I'm broadcasting live from my office studio here in Brea, California. I hope you like the digs if you're checking me out on on YouTube. And uh, I'll still be able to take calls live. And as a reminder, our phone lines are open, 888-909-1050. So if you have any questions about what I'm talking about, please call. I'm here to promote our community of people who want the best for themselves and the best for their families and businesses and create a forum for you to voice your concerns and questions. Now, in every show, we talk about three things, okay, among other topics, growing and protecting your wealth, exit planning is the second thing, which is uh, uh, is selling or transferring your business if you're a business owner or retirement if you're an employee, and lastly, estate planning, which is creating a legacy while fully enjoying your money while you're alive. Now, uh, today's Wake Up Now segment, as we start each show, is what is financial organization and how does it benefit my life? You know, over the years, I've learned that financial success is very much related to life success in general and vice versa. And in today's world, so many things that have to do with money seem complicated, very hard to understand. You know, a long time ago, I once heard that having 15 objectives is worse than having none. Okay, in other words, trying to juggle 15 balls and figure out what's going on with your cash flow, your family, your college fund, your retirement, your student loans, your mortgage, that's just not hard to do. I mean, that's hard to do, but it's also inefficient and effective. And with all your busy lives and busyness, you know, throw on top of that complicated financial stuff and your money doesn't get the 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 time and attention it needs. And, and today, everyone talks about multitasking, like it's some sort of amazing skill. Uh, I've had the pleasure of doing a lot of interviews in my career, and people say, I can do nine things at one time. You know, hire me for that because I'm so good at multitasking. Well, how good do you think you can really do nine things at the same time? I mean, how much care and attention are you giving those nine things, doing them at the same time? Lately, personally, I've been trying to focus on unitasking, which is doing one thing really, really well and being present, fully present in doing that task. And the same thing applies to financial objectives. If you spread yourself too thin, it doesn't work when it comes to your money. So when I work with clients, the first thing I do is refocus your energy on simplicity. One of the biggest and most enduring brands we've seen over the last 30 years is Apple. And if you look at Apple's product design to their marketing, it's all about simplicity. From the gray logo, which is simple, to one button on all their devices and a simple interface, it's, it's easy, it's recognizable, and most of all, it's reliable. And that's the experience you should have when you think about money and your finances. That's the experience you should have with your financial advisor. It's simplicity because it is really simple. Now, under the hood of the car, it's extremely complex. Uh, I use spreadsheets with more numbers than you can imagine. They look like mothers and grandmothers of spreadsheets with so many numbers. And the calculations involved when you assess risk, portfolio performance, solution design, it's very scientific. In fact, every decision you make financially should be scientific, not based on a hunch or a gut feeling or because you read an article on saving for retirement or investing in today's markets, whatever. The strategy, the concepts, these are simple things. And those of you listening who are my clients like uh, know that I like to draw. I draw a lot. I draw a lot of simple pictures because the strategies can be explained with those. Uh, With my two young boys at home, sometimes I think maybe I should put together like a a kid's book on it because really the strategies are uh, very fundamentally easy to understand if they're broken down to you correctly. And financial organization is a simple idea. And this is the idea. The relationship you have with your money is similar to the relationship you want with your physical body, okay? 
This is the concept of financial balance. What I mean by financial balance is on last week's episode, I shared with how financial success is not a series of products. It's not a series of predictions and a series of assumptions because, again, who can predict tomorrow or, or even the rest of today? So why are we basing our financial lives on assumed dates of retirement, assumed college tuitions, assumed dates of when we're going to die? I mean, even saying that, it sounds ridiculous. And I've had clients for 15 years, and some of them told me they are retiring the day they hit 65, they're done. And they're 70 now, and not only are they still working, they are thriving at their work lives. So what happens when life throws curveballs like this? You know, and, and, and you listening know well that life is a series of curveballs. If you can't hit a curveball, you can't play in the major leagues. Anyone can hit a fastball. It's being able to adjust, to be in balance, to be able to hit both the fastball and the curveball. And for those of you who are listening that are Cubs fans, congratulations. I know that was a long time coming for you. It was a fun game to watch, so congrats to you, Cub fans. But bringing this all together, what is financial success based on then? My philosophy is to make the most of today. Doing your best from a financial standpoint today Preparing for the worst, but pre expecting the best and staying financially balanced. For those of you who've done yoga, okay, and know the benefits of yoga, it's finely tuning your body's nerves and muscles to balance yourself regardless of your external condition. And because you're balanced, you can create a space of calmness, whether it's hot or cold or you're on one foot or some of you can pose on your head. I've seen that. You are in balance, and that's how I plan with clients. That no matter what happens to you, you're always financially balanced. So how do you achieve this balance, this financial calmness, this ability to adjust to your circumstances and create more financial e efficiency? Well, it starts with a basic, fundamental, almost feng shui-like idea, which is get organized and clean everything up. Most people I meet with, they're completely disorganized when it comes to their money. They have immaculate homes and spotless cars, but they also have 18 statements from 18 different financial companies, and they don't know what's going on. And I've seen people bring into my office sealed envelopes that contain statements. They, don't even, they, they haven't even opened the statement because they don't want to see what's inside or they don't know how to understand it. Uh, I've read through insurance policies that were printed – before I was born, if you can believe that, uh, there are more, and I'm 40, so these pages are like yellow, but they've kept them through the years, and, and it looked like Indiana Jones went into some tomb and found these documents. You know, they're they're so old, and they're keeping it together in some binder, and the the, the, the covers are falling off. But disorganization is not just a way of tidying up your financial situation. What financial organization is is keeping your money preserved. And available for growth. And here's the deal. If you're disorganized financially, it's lost money through costs, through in increased risk, and a reduced chance of success. So in other words, organization is money. I'll repeat that again. To be financially organized means money, real money, that you either benefit from if you're organized or you're losing if you're disorganized. So you ask, how? Well, first off, there are fees. Every company you work with has fees, administrative fees for printing your statements, maintaining their websites. When you call the 1-800 number to get help, there's someone on the other line. You pay that person's salary through your fees. There's fees for everything. And if you consolidate your assets, your insurances, things like that, get organized. You can get discounts on these fees. Okay, Fees, I like to say, are like death by a thousand paper cuts. You're just bleeding money away. It's leaking like a bucket with holes in it. Okay. Not to mention, uh, in some accounts, it's difficult to even see your fees, what you're being charged. So knowing what you have, where it is, is extremely important. If you can't figure that out, call me or email me. Uh, I'll do it. I'll save you a ton of time. Or if you don't want to get organized or can't, work with somebody who can. Work with somebody who's going to uh, organize you. Now, Another reason for organization is taxes. Each of your accounts has a different tax status. 
So while you're working your tail off to save more money, you're putting it in an account and, and that could either mean more taxes now or more taxes later. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. Uh, when we get back, we're going to continue the discussion and we'll go from there. Uh, you're on KCAA 1050 AM 1645 FM. I want to take a quick moment to tell you about some of my passions. I enjoy basketball, cooking, fine dining, a good single malt scotch, and of course, cigars. What better way to wind down a great meal or a day at the office than relaxing with a smooth, drawing, robust cigar? That's why I go to Marquis Cigar Lounge to handle my cigar fix. They're right on 2nd Street in Belmont Shore of Long Beach. It's got to be one of the coolest neighborhoods to hang out in. They've got a great little lounge area. The people are really good. TVs to watch your sports or dramas. And as far as selection, they've got a huge array of cigars at the best prices you'll find in the area. And if you can't get to Long Beach, you can order by phone or email. Give them a call at 562-439-8284 or email them at marqueecigarlounge at gmail.com. That's M-A-R-Q-U-E-E cigarlounge at gmail.com. They take orders, offer great rates on shipping, and they do events. One of my very best buddies got married over the last weekend. They provided the cigars with a nice little humidor and setup. So look them up on Yelp. They've got amazing reviews. And the next time you need to relax, go to one of the great restaurants on 2nd Street in Belmont Shore, and then walk right over to Marquis Cigar Lounge for a cigar to cap off the night. And whether you're hosting an event, hosting a party, or just want some cigars for your private stash at home, give them a call or email and they'll take care of you. Make sure to use promo code FINANCIALWAKEUP when you call or email. You'll get an additional 15% off any order or purchase. Again, the promo code FINANCIALWAKEUP. That's Marquis Cigar Lounge, 562-439-8284. That's 562-439-8284 or find them on Yelp. All right, and we are back. And before the break, I was talking about taxes and, and how each account you have has a different tax status. So you're putting your hard-earned money into these buckets, and that could either mean more taxes now or it could mean more taxes later. Now, in a future show, I'm going to talk to you about 401ks, for example. These are one of the most common things out there. And by default, people just put money in there. Sometimes that's not exactly the best place to do uh, or put your money. And, and it absolutely has to do with taxes. So one of the things you have to consider when you're looking at financial organization is the tax status. When I first started in wealth management many years ago, friends would say, I'm getting a 10% rate of return. Can you beat that? And I would say, is that before or after taxes? Because I could probably reduce your risk and maybe get the same net return by just being smarter from a tax perspective, not by picking better stocks or picking better uh, investments uh, and getting lucky, right? So organization leads to better tax efficiency. Um, a third point, organization reduces risk. When I sometimes meet married couples, sometimes they don't even have the same risk tolerance. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But I've met very conservative clients where one spouse is in everything aggressive, you know, globally invested, very risky, and the other spouse has everything in cash making no interest. Now, Yogi Berra has one of the favorite quotes uh, that I always use, which is having one foot in the oven and one in an ice bucket, that doesn't make you warm, okay? Just because you, you have one sitting in a hot, steaming hot oven and the other foot sitting in a cold bucket of ice, that doesn't make you warm. And your portfolio as a household can sometimes have increased risk, could lead to financial disaster under certain market circumstances when someone's very volatile and risky and the other is not. So uh, it's important to wake up to what is my risk tolerance as a family and organization solves that. And lastly, if you're disorganized, it means you're inefficient. And there, there are two main problems when you're saving money. Number one, if you're saving too much, you're sacrificing today for a future you may never even get to. And if you're saving too little, you're living it up today you know, having a great time, and then you risk running out of money later. So to get to get to point B, you would need to know where your point A is, right? Where are you today? Would you agree that it's important to know where your money is going right now? What, you know, if you're not organized, how do you know how much to save? The whole engine to financial success is saving money. So when was the last time you spoke to someone? about maximizing your savings. 
and I help people organize so that you can be efficient with those savings. And here's the kicker as I close this section. Once you get organized, you don't have to spend much time maintaining it. It's like a, it's not a one-time deal, but it's not like this painful process where you have to save receipts in a shoebox and write down expenses in a spreadsheet because technology's evolved. Technology has evolved to make it pretty easy for you to maintain that organization once you've set up. So organize, take an inventory of your financial life, plan for the worst and expect the best. And, and as I close this section off, I mentioned each week that there will be a be aware or beware tip of the week, right? Where I tell you, be aware of this thing or you're going to have to beware the consequences. So the be aware or beware tip of the week is be aware of where your money is, what type of account it is, the fees that you're paying, and the taxes you're subject to. And be aware that these things, uh, if they're not what you like doing, like organization or calculating negative drags on your money, like fees and taxes, then, then call me or contact me so I can help you do it. Because if you're not financially organized, beware of your hard-earned money bleeding out when, without you even realizing it. It's like death by a thousand paper cuts. And even people who are well-off and comfortable that I meet, they're bleeding money away, paying fees. They're, they're losing money safely. Their leech is sucking their money out, uh, and, and, and people aren't awake to that. It's, it's, it's important to wake up to this. In other cases, I've seen people say, well, I need to save more money or I have nothing to save each paycheck. Many times, people who don't know how to save are also the most disorganized. And that's why they can't save because they don't know where the money is and where it's going. You're paying fees and taxes instead of saving more, saving more money. And again, it's not just the fees and taxes you pay today. It's the opportunity cost that you've lost in investing those fees because it's off your balance sheet and it's gone forever. Okay, once you pay a fee or a tax today, you lose the chance to invest and have that money grow. And, and once that compounds, man, the, the, the losses are huge and I can show you that. So at this point, I have the pleasure of introducing a, a friend, a colleague, uh, Rob Roberto to the show. Uh, he is a nationally renowned trainer for a philosophy called the living balance sheet. I talked a lot about balance today, and it's all about bringing that balance to your life from a financial standpoint. It's a philosophy, it's a technology that I subscribe to, it's, and I utilize exclusively with clients. He's a member of the Million Dollar Roundtable. He's calling from Chula Vista today. He is also, on a personal note, the president of the Parkview Little League, which, by the way, won the Little League World Series in 2009. His son played on that team, which is a pretty neat thing. He was also picked as one of the 50 people to watch in San Diego Magazine. Rod, I want to welcome you to the show. Hey, Danny. How you doing? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful Saturday morning, and I'm really excited to be chatting with you about uh, balance and, and the living balance sheet. So you've been training and teaching advisors and clients for many years. I mean, it's got to be in the thousands, I'd imagine. Why? What is it about getting financially organized that you think is so critical for people's success from a, from a money standpoint? Well, you know, and I heard you talk about financial organization, and, and there are people, like you said, that are disorganized out there, but really – what you're really looking for, not just getting, not just getting organized the way you were talking about about five ten minutes, but really, I like to say financial prioritization. Because if we had four hundred million, if I had won the lotto, I probably don't need to be as organized as I am today. But because people out there today have limited resources, such as cash flow, and this could be somebody making a hundred thousand, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, it doesn't matter. Your, your resources are limited, so we talked about financial organization as where does your money go first, the financial prioritization. And to me, when I sit down with clients or I or sit down there with advisors, getting clients to reprioritize their money, I believe, starts the financial organization process. Right? Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And, and that is a very key point is not just figuring out where the money is, but determining where it goes. Now, I know also that you've trained uh, all across the country uh, on, on this app called the Living Balance Sheet, which is not just the philosophy, but there's some technology behind it. 
It's on our show's website, financialwakeupshow.com, under the About tab. Or you can go directly to the Living Balance Sheet website, which is livingbalancesheet.com. Can you tell our listeners, Rod, a little bit uh, about the app itself and and how it works to help you prioritize your financial situation? Yeah, well, there's a lot of apps out there today. I mean, people are adding 30,000 apps per day onto their phones, you know, is what I heard. And one of the things about the Living Balance Sheet app is it's simple. You put it, it's all on one page. You start to put all your stuff on there, whether it's your mortgage, whether it's your investment statements, your retirement accounts, everything that you have financially, there's 19 boxes that you fill, and you'll be able to see everything all on one page, just just like a CFO would be able to do as he looks at his business or a, a CPA as he looks at his client's account. So it's a balance sheet, but we call it a living balance sheet because it actually moves overnight. So if your accounts go up, it, it, will, it will show you your net worth went up. If you put something on your credit card, it'll show your net worth with the liability. So there's a lot of things by having it all on one page that allows you as a consumer or decision maker, I believe, we believe, to make better financial decisions because you see it right there all at one, all at one time. Okay. That's that's a good summation. And, and let's just continue on that path. Um, you know, you and I have worked together a lot in the past, and you know that I'm a big proponent of saving money. And and this app, this philosophy is big on that, too. Can you tell listeners why savings is such a big component to long-term financial success? Well, you know, today's planning has to be different today. Um, it used to be that, you know, our parents or 85% of the country, you know, when you, when you got done retiring at 60, 65 years old, the company paid your retirement. You know, Ford, right. GM, all, all those AT and T, all those big companies paid paid your retirement. Today, right. that's totally flipped around. It's you know, fifteen percent of the country has a pension. You know, like a teacher, or, you know, a policeman, or somebody working for the county or a city. But most people don't have that pension, so savings becomes much more important. And think about your own cell phone bill, cable bill, internet bill that you have at home. I mean, I have five kids, and you know, think about what that looks like on a monthly basis, and I didn't even have that growing up. And so you got all these things pulling at you for your money that you believe you need to have, and, and some do, but, you know, it's four or 500 a month that you can't save, and now you have to pay for that and put away money for retirement. So right. what we started finding out when I got into business 18 years ago, we started looking at what makes sense, where should my money go first, and most people are out there trying to catch up, like you said earlier on the show, because of, of rate of return, and they're chasing that rate. And the real rate you should be chasing is savings rate. It's the one you control. It's, right. it's the rate you control is how much can I save. And unfortunately, people are looking at marketing material and listening to people that, you know, put them in portfolios that they can't tell us if that's right. But I can tell you today that if I'm saving 20%, I'll be okay. Yep. And so if yep. there's, the biggest advice I can give out there today is look at your savings rate and how much are you putting away. And if it's not 15 to 20 because of taxes that are going up in the future, inflation, things that are, we're going to be buying that are even been invented, and you know, life that just happens, then work on how do I get there. Right. That's a, I mean that's I mean that's a big thing. It's it's one of the biggest things that you uh, will be part of who you are and who we are is you know, become better savers. You know when I meet with a lot of people, and I know you do too, we're finding out that this conversation is so much on growing the money, right? It's how I can get a better rate of return. Uh, it's not just. Uh, there's not a lot of talk about the savings, which you just mentioned, but there's not a lot of talk about protection, protection of that money, protecting the money that you've accumulated. Uh, and LBS philosophy or living balance sheet philosophy is big on protection. Can you explain why it's not just growing the money, but protecting it? That's so important. Well, it's, it's, so I'll give a simple example to clients out there. You know, this, for instance, we had a hundred dollar a month in our budget. That's all we had. You know, so I'm going to exaggerate the example. And we had two simple choices. One is, do I buy health insurance with $100 to protect? 
you know, my family, or do I put my hundred dollars in my 401k plan or in an investment plan? And mathematically, you would do the investment because a hundred over a 12 month period is twelve hundred dollars plus interest. But philosophically, you ask people out there, what would they do? And they would tell you they would buy the health insurance. And you ask them, why would you buy the health insurance? It's because philosophically, you don't know what could happen if your son, you know, like, I just went, I just, you know, I don't know if I told you, Dan, but my son just had Tommy John surgery Thursday. Oh, jeez. Yeah, what would that look like if I didn't have health insurance? Right. You know what I mean? And so it's that, what, you, what you're talking about is just protection first because it's protecting for the unexpected. And most of the listeners out there today, their biggest asset biggest thing they need to protect. You, know, you protect your car, you protect your home, and you think your home's your biggest asset. Well, multiply 100,000 income times 30 years, that's 3 million. And how much of that are you protecting? Mm. Mm. You know really I mean? good so, point. Yeah, yeah. It, we do start at protection. It's it's the right way. It's 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 what's ethical to me. It's what's moral, to be honest with you. It's, it's where you mm. should go before you mm. go anywhere else. Right. Now, one of the things that I really like about this philosophy is how a lot of the calculations that happen within the living balance sheet differ from traditional retirement calculators out there. Right now, if you go on the internet, you're going to find all these retirement calculators and are you on track and blah, 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 blah. You know, cash flow analysis is one of my favorite modules. Uh, for listeners, what that means is we simulate and almost test your finances like a lab would, stress test it. Like a major corporation would. We stress test your financial situation under duress, under good things. So when unexpected events happen, you're really well taken care of. Can you explain how some of the philosophical differences you see when using this type of uh, technology versus traditional re retirement calculators you see out there? Well, most traditional retirement calculators just show you the, the good side. You know, um, your statement, for instance, you have $100,000 in your retirement plan today, and I'll use that as an example because uh, most people have uh, relate to that. They have money in the retirement plan. And as they're looking online, as they're getting their statement on a quarterly or a monthly basis, they, they might see it grow and grow over time as the market starts to move in the, in, a, in, the, in the right direction. But what they don't see is the other side, is the taxes that are, that are they're accumulating along the way. And what our system, or what Castle Design Calculator does, it brings everything all into the picture. It just It shows you what's happening to your money at the same time it's growing. And the reason you need that is that you can de develop defensive strategies to recover loss. You were talking about fees earlier in your, in, in your show, but the biggest loss that most people have is taxes. And the recovery of tax that you might not take today or unknowingly or purposely paying it, the recovery of that tax puts a lot of money back on your balance sheet and creates strategic rate of return instead of product rate of return. And um, I guess the simplest analogy to use is, you know, is, you know, we all play golf. Me and you both play golf, but, you know, we, we took Tiger Woods golf clubs today, and even at his worst, he is today, he still plays better than we do. And even I have his clubs, doesn't mean I'm going to play like it. And then they're a great product. Mm -hmm. What we need is his swing, his technique, his strategy. If we had that, it wouldn't matter the product we have. But you combine great product, great swing, great technique, great strategy, then that's where you become a world-class golfer in our case, where we, be, where we have clients be able to get where they want to go when you put it all together. So most programs out there don't put it all together they're really focused on one piece or two pieces, and and they leave out the most important part. I believe is taxes. Absolutely, and I love what you just said there: strategic rate of return versus product rate of return. In fact, I'm going to steal that. I always steal your stuff, but uh, I think that's that's a fantastic way to describe what we're talking about here. Um, yeah, I just you know I just had a client, you know, guy's in his fifties, ten years away from retirement. Working for the government, he had a great pension. Mm -hmm. he had plenty, put plenty of money in his retirement plan. Put plenty of money outside of his retirement plan. Mm -hmm. And here he is. And people were talking him into uh, doing some, you know, real estate investments. And I said, 
And I sat there and I said, you know, the, the biggest thing that you, that could hurt you is the investment behavior is you. Mm. You have everything. We, we just need to be strategic around taxes mm-hmm. and you're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. And uh, most people just, they just can't see it. And they have, believe they have to take risk. But if you sit down and look at it from a strategic capturing of rate of return or cost, like you were talking earlier, that will be the biggest on your balance sheet that most people just don't even realize they can get. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Agree with you, 100. Last question, Rod, before I let you go. If there's one thing you would do to encourage people uh, to, to, to achieve right now and make a difference in their financial paths, what they do in the future, to unlock the abundance that we talk about on the show all the time, that, that's, that's within all of this. What would that one or two things be that you would encourage them to do? Well, I think what you need to do is what's hard out there in the marketplace today is you have so many advisors. And it would be nice if they were all in the same room to help you make your financial decisions, whether it's your mortgage person, your CPA, your, your tax attorney, your retirement guy. It would be, be awesome to be there all in one room because when you meet with them individually, if I met with a retirement guy today, of course he's going to talk to me about retirement and putting money there. But to me, like we start from the beginning, it's financial prioritization of your cash flow and really looking at your savings. And am I saving 15 to 20%? And once you get to the point where you're just liquid savings, money you control, money you need that you have access to, because it's statistically 70% of the people out there tap their retirement account prematurely. So what that tells me is there's no planning or coordination of the planning. And so what you need to do is just can I get to 15 to 20%? And again, it's not going to happen overnight. It just happens over time. It's, it's, it's a choice. And once that happens, then we can reprioritize where the money should go. Okay? And right. where it should go. Should it go in investment? Should it go in retirement? Should, go, should I buy real estate? Should I put more money in the business? Whatever it is, but it's at 15, 20%. A business owner would not hold a business without capital. Mm-hmm. And we're just, you know, as a dad or as, a, as the breadwinner in the family, that's what I do is I have to have capital to run my family business or my family. And so savings is definitely, um, I, I believe our firm exists out there to teach people how to save again. Sure. Well, I got to say, Rod, a lot of great stuff. It's uh, It's been great having a conversation with you on, on the air today. It feels like I'm just chatting with you like we're sharing ideas, which is wonderful. And uh, I want to thank you for your time this morning. I hope you have a great uh, week, rest of the weekend. And uh, we'll talk again soon, all right? Yeah, Dan, hey, congratulations. I think you're going to be awesome at this. I think it's, I think there needs to be a show out there that, that just looks the other way, looks looks down a different road because, like I said, 85% of the country doesn't have a pension today. So it has to be, the approach has to be different, and it just has to be. And, and I'm glad you stepped out of the box and, and stepped up, and, and uh, you're going to be good. And anytime you need me on the show, reach out. All right, my friend? Thank you, Rod. I appreciate the kind words. I really do. We'll talk soon. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. All right. All right, bye. You know, um, at this point, we we take questions, and we got an email question come in, and uh, it was really long and well-written, but uh, I'm going to summarize it so I can get right to the answer. Uh, The email question asks, uh, and this is from Jerry, who is writing from Tustin. He writes... How do I know I, uh, the a good advisor from a bad advisor, or who should I use? He's um, describing a friend that he has here who's in the industry, and then he has somebody who's worked with at a bank, and he's trying to make a decision around who he should be working with. And this is a great question. You know, how do we pick advisors out there? And uh, if you don't have an alternative, Always just look for information. That's the first step I would take. But there's an analogy, uh, or not an analogy, an acronym that I use uh, and I taught for many, many years. And the acronym is GLIDE, G-L-I-D-E. And this is how I would recommend you look at and evaluate advisors. 
G. G stands for gut feeling. Don't underestimate the ability you have to trust your gut. There are so many nonverbal uh, sensors and and things that are pro- projected when people talk. Uh, that's one of the reasons we're on YouTube here. Is is you know you can see things that you won't necessarily pick up on on the radio. Um, gut feeling is really how do you feel when this person talks? Do you feel that sense of integrity that they have your best interest at heart? Uh, for many many years, I've talked about how important it is as advisors to improve ourselves because as improving yourself you're putting out that better energy out there. So G stands for gut feeling. L, licenses. This is really big. Federal government regulation, as I mentioned last week, is currently changing. In fact, January 1, you're going to see a lot of regulatory changes, I think, for the better. Uh, It's going to get better advice to you at more reasonable fees than you've seen in the past. There's uh, a good piece of Congress that is dedicated to – figuring this out from a financial advice standpoint. But L, you got to work with someone who's licensed. And even though they're the nicest person, they got the biggest smile and the biggest heart, if they don't have the necessary licenses uh, that are required by the government, um, beware of people. This is not part of the beware tip of the week, but beware of people who call themselves financial advisors, financial consultants, and don't have the necessary licenses. Okay? Um I. I stands for inventory. Inventory means what's in the inventory of the advisor. What that means is what can they offer you? Is it all just a couple companies or do they have access to all sorts of different types of companies? Do they have access to all different types of product lines? Because if my inventory is limited, then that means I may steer you towards something that may not be the best available product out there. And Inventory is extremely important to evaluate who do these people represent and and what kind of access do they have. Uh, D, D stands for designations. Okay, designations are the alphabet soup letters that come after someone's name on a business card. And those designations are extremely uh, valuable because I think the education that's required to get those designations is, is big. It's, it's really different than what you would get without those designations. So I encourage you to look at those, research those. The most common ones you'll see out there, a certified financial planner, chartered financial counselor, uh, counselor um, uh, chief life underwriter. Those are, there's a whole slew of them. But the more designations, the better. And lastly, E is how do they earn their money? How do they earn their money? I think it's really important that you understand commissions, fees, how they charge those things, because every good advisor out there deserves it. Uh, Are you getting the planning you need? Are you getting the type of uh, objective view that you need? That's that's absolutely critical. And uh, if you ever have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me, Daniel at financialwakeupshow.com. Uh, or visit our website, financialwakeupshow.com. We've got a great newsletter. It goes out every month, uh, which which I contribute to and, and write. So there's information out there to help you sort through these things, help you get financially organized, help you take steps uh, towards greater efficiency and, and not losing money through methods that you're not aware of. And, and as Rod, our guest, mentioned, taxes, uh, also a big piece of that. At this point, we're going to take another quick break, and when we get back, uh, we're going to continue our discussion around organization, uh, but also we're going to welcome our guest to the show, uh, uh, our second guest, who represents a very near and dear cause to me. We'll bring him on next. Uh, You're on the Financial Wake Up Show with Daniel Choi, KCAA, 1050 AM and 106.5 FM. With this being a new show, I've had to think a lot about promoting the show. So I needed some stuff printed and looking sharp, including the nice poster board you see behind me. And I have to tell you, the people at Copytron Printing 
If you have anything you need printed, these are the folks you need to get in touch with. First off, they've been around for 22 years. They handle your design, last minute printing projects. They've got competitive pricing on black and white and color copies, diverse product lineup, which includes things like yard signs, banner and poster printing, books, labels, t-shirts, trade show displays. They know what they're doing, do it extremely well, and with the cost and service you'll need. They're in Anaheim, but if you need, they'll ship your order clear across the country, make it worth your while. Brianna and Noel, they were so helpful to me. They'll take care of you just like they took care of me. Not to mention, look them up on Yelp. They've got amazing reviews. So call them at 1-800-300-9485. That's 1-800-300-9485. Ask for Brianna. She's going to help you with any of these printing needs. For those of you more internet inclined, it's copytronprinting.com. That's copy, T-R-O-N, printing.com. Make sure you tell them promo code financial wake up when you call or email. You'll get an additional 10% off their already competitive pricing. You can't beat that for the quality and service they're going to provide you. Okay, and now uh, to go to our next segment, uh, our weekly Give More to Get More. And what this segment's all about is where I spotlight a charity, talk about the cause, share that with you, the listener, so you can get involved. And I truly believe in order to get more, you have to give more. And that's why this week I'm spotlighting Talk About Curing Autism, T-A-C-A, in Orange County. And uh, this, this cause, uh, dealing with autism, is very near and dear to my heart. I have been deeply affected personally uh, by autism and it's one of the first organizations I wanted to highlight on this show because of the closeness I feel towards creating awareness around autism. My guest today is Simran Garcia. Simran is the outreach coordinator for Southern California and the coordinator for Orange County uh, Taka. He is the chapter coordinator. He found, it, he found the organization 10 years ago when his son was diagnosed with autism. Uh, and then he started volunteering as a parent mentor about seven years ago. Then three years ago, he was asked to run the chapter. So uh, we are speaking to one of the heads on this amazing organization. Their website is tacanow.org, uh, tacanow.org. The Orange County chapter is one of the largest chapters in Taka. It's a pleasure to have Simran on the show. Simran, how are you this morning? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. And it's nice to be able to bring this awareness over our airwaves today. Can you share with the listeners, what is the mission of TACA and what are you trying to accomplish? Uh, TACA pretty much is dedicated to educating, empowering, and supporting families affected by autism. So our goal is once a family gets a diagnosis, and they find us, we aim to speed up the cycle of time from the time that the child is diagnosed to getting them effective treatments. Now, that can be whether or not they're going to access in California, regional center, their school district, um, you know, occupational therapy, speech therapy, just all the services that this child is going to need for an extended period of time. We help the families get through that sort of um I like to call the rigmarole of the system and mm. get them moving so they're not sitting on a waiting list or, you know, wondering what to do next. That's incredibly valuable because I've heard about some of the hangups that people find in the traditional system and how your organization ha- can help with that. Now, TAC- TACA is a, is a nationwide organization. Can you give us a little history on, on it and, and where it's at today? Sure. Uh, 16 years ago, our executive director and founder, Lisa Ackerman, started TACA in her living room here in Orange County. Um, Her son was diagnosed with autism, and from that point, 16 years to now, we have grown from, you know, 10 families to now 48,000 families. Um, We became a national organization about 10 years ago. Um, We are now... uh, have 32 chapters in 27 states and over the past year we have like we have 500 volunteers that have done over 28,000 hours of service we've responded over to 29,000 emails of support 
We've given out 62 scholarships. We have given out almost 2,800 free autism journey guides. Um, Our website, which is free, has had over a million visitors. We've had a million point, uh, 1.6 million visits, um, page views on our website. We have a national conference last year that we had 859 people in attendance. So uh, we started very, very small in the living room, and now we've been able to spread our message throughout the United States. That is incredible. Uh, 16 years. I, I'm just stuck on 48,000 families. Not let, let alone all the growth that you've also seen in other areas. But think about the impact of that. And um, this is a cause that, that is something I, I really believe our listeners should get uh, awareness on. Where, where do you all need support and how do our listeners get involved? We always um, need financial support, of course, through donations or grants. Because what TACA does is 95% of what we do for our families we provide for free. We have parent education meetings, coffee talks, autism learning seminars. We do a free legal clinic. We have free parent mentors. We provide a free autism journey guide um, to all of our, whoever attends a, a meeting or a coffee talk. So what we try and do is, you know, autism is already very, very expensive. Um, you know, between co-payments and possibly having to hire an attorney when you're dealing with your school district, Um, you know, the cost is astronomical for a family living with autism. So what we do is we try and ease that burden. We don't look to our families for, you know, paying a membership fee. Membership is free. Our website is free. We provide free webinars. So we always need, of course, financial support because we need to be able to keep our mission going. We need to provide support to the chapters to get them printed materials, um, you know, technology, a laptop, um, projectors, um, you know, sim- something as simple as providing coffee. You know, we have to pay for the coffee. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's all sorts of things, but 95, per- like I said, 95% of what we do, we provide for free. So we always need financial support, of course, you know, in the, in the way of money. But we also look for um, donations for, like, our auctions, for raffle items when we do our family events, um, our largest, okay. which is our annual picnic, which is held in the summer. Um, we have our next fundraiser coming up, um, Annie Up for Autism. We need, you know, obviously auction items for that because everything we do goes towards our families. That's great to know because I think it's important that we uh, as listeners and, and our community out there know what our money is doing. And it sounds like a lot of good things. Just to reiterate, uh, Taka holds parent education events, coffee talks. They've got a free lending library. They've got free legal clinics. They hold four family events a year. And in, in the fall, they host something called the National Taka Autism Conference, which is held in Costa Mesa. The conference is three full days of learning for families, uh, from new medical treatments to learning about transition into adulthood, special needs, trust, and communication. Um Simran, do you have any events or fundraisers coming up that you, you'd like to promote? We actually, um, this coming weekend on Saturday, uh, November 12th, we uh-huh. have our largest fundraiser of the year, which is Annie Up for Autism. It's okay. going to be held at the Monarch Beach Resort. Wow. Um, and this, is, this fundraiser is actually what provides a lot of our financial support going into the next year um, to start so we can start planning our budget for more family events, more outreach, more um, getting our message out. Uh-huh. Um, you can buy tickets at AnnieUpForAutism.org. Or if you can't attend the event, there is a, the silent auction is already online. Um, there's trips to Napa. There's signed guitars from Jane's Addiction, who did um, the Jack FM show in September. Um, there's like wine tasting, there's all sorts of cool things in this silent auction. And if you can't attend the event, you are more than welcome to go on the silent auction and put your bid in. And, um, everything we do helps our families with autism. That's great. One last thing before I let you go and and thank you so much for creating some awareness here. Special needs trusts and estate planning in general is is a key component of our weekly show. And it's an area that I specialize in with 
my clients. What do you think is the importance from your perspective as coordinator for TACA around special needs trust and estate planning for people in general? You know, uh, it's something that parents, we as parents of children with autism, uh, we always say we want to live forever, but we can't live forever. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I cringe when I hear a story of a, of a parent that's gone way too soon, whether by illness or sudden tragedy or, you know, whatever's happened. Um, the number one thing I, I always tell the parents is, you know, because I hear from parents, well, my kid is only five or my kid is only seven. I don't think I need to worry about that stuff. And I'm, I, my, I always say to them, you, you do, you do have to worry because there's a good, you know, there's a loving grandparent out there who wants to leave a huge chunk of money to your child. Um, and when they turn 18, there's going to be a big problem because they're not going to be able to get the benefits they need from the state. Um, you want to make sure your kids are taken care of because God forbid something happened. I mean, this is for kids with autism as well as, you know, the neurotypical children in your life. You know, I, I have two children. My eldest has autism. My youngest is daughter is neurotypical. I want to make sure that he's taken care of if something happens, that money set aside, and it doesn't affect his life. You know, he's going to need assistance when he turns 18. So my biggest thing I always tell parents is you do have to think about the future. I know the future is scary. Um, we don't obviously ever want to think about the fact that we might die. Um, but we need to put those steps in place to make sure that our kids are taken care of because we just don't know. We don't know what's going to happen an hour from now versus a year from now. So you need to put a plan in place, even if you just start with the basics. You don't have a, a lot of money. You know, a lot of parents tell me, well, I don't have a lot of money. I don't have this. I'm like, but you still got to put something together. There needs to be something there. Right. That's that. That's powerful. For our listeners, what, what Simran just shared is something that I feel uh, so strongly about, and it's amazing how congruent your message was. Simran, thank you so much for your time this morning and bringing awareness of, of autism and TACA to our listeners. Have a great Saturday, okay? Thank you so much for having me on. All right, perfect. So uh, to wrap up today's show, a reminder, call me, talk to me, ask questions, okay? The, answer, the, the number to... Uh, my personal phone number, 8507-WAKE-UP. That's 8507-WAKE-UP. I answer that phone. If I don't answer, I'm going to get back to you within the day. Uh, check out our website, financialwakeupshow.com. Write me and ask me questions. Email me if you need. Dan Daniel at financialwakeupshow.com. It's real simple. Uh, I'll write you back. You can go to our Facebook page under the Financial Wake Up Show. Our Twitter handle, at TFWUS. You can ask questions there. At the very least... I'd, I'd encourage you to sit down and chat. Uh, when I meet with people, again, it's complimentary. It's 100% uh, uh, confidential. And again, there's no charge until you decide to work with me. And uh, let's just make sure you're doing everything the right way. It's your money, and, and we should make the most of it. Uh, again, I, I think what Simran ended the show with is so powerful uh, in terms of getting ready, prepared for the best you can do today. Uh, I want you to become awakened Move closer to your fulfillment of your financial abundance. If you ever miss a show, we're on YouTube. We're on SoundCloud. The podcast is up on iTunes. Just search under The Financial Wake-Up Show with Daniel Choi. Again, the website, financialwakeupshow.com, also has links to all the past ep episodes and uh, audio links. Until next week, when we see you again, I wish you health, wealth, and prosperity. It's been a lot of fun. I appreciate your time this morning investing uh, this hour for you and your family and your business. Uh, and with that, adios. Guardian, its subsidiaries, agents, and employees do not provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. Consult your tax, legal, or accounting professional regarding your individual situation. All investments contain risk and may lose value. Daniel Choi, Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor and Certified Exit Planner, is a registered representative financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities, LLC. Securities products and advisory services offered through PAS, member FINRA, SIPC, financial representative of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, Guardian, New York, New York, PAS, is an indirect, wholly owned subsidiary 
subsidiary of Guardian. Westpac Wealth Partners is not an affiliate or subsidiary of PAS or Guardian California Insurance License Number OD40390. This radio broadcast is for informational purposes only. Guest speakers and their firms are not affiliated with or endorsed by PAS, Guardian, or Westpac. Opinions stated are their own and not necessarily those of PAS, Guardian, or Westpac. 2016-30361 expires 1018. You're listening to KCAA, Loma Linda, California. The best station in the nation. 